Okay, happy Halloween. On today's show, I'm talking about the scariest movie you could ever watch. And it's not what Netflix is featuring today. Today we're talking about how we hold ourselves back out of fear of what others will think, how we dilute our voice, and ultimately the price we pay through doing that. I hope you like this one. Hey, it's Ange Peters, and welcome to Whole Fit Talks, a weekly broadcast streaming live on the Whole Fit Facebook page. So excited to have you join us as we jam on living, loving, and leading a supernatural life. All right, welcome. Happy Halloween. I am Ange Peters. I'm the founder of Whole Fit. Welcome to Whole Fit Talks. If this is your first time streaming in live, so happy to have you here. I am the founder of Whole Fit. I'm a uh, Canadian founder with doTERRA. And I do this weekly live broadcast almost every Wednesday at two o'clock Eastern. And we talk about lots of good stuff here, mostly leadership, mostly healthy living. Um, and sometimes we get into focus topics. And today I've got a pretty scary one for you. <laughs> Please hit the share button over on Instagram or Facebook. I'd be so grateful if you share the show out uh, with your communities and with your friends. And if you are joining live today and you have a live question that you want to make sure that I see, if you could please put a pumpkin in front of your comment, just tap the emojis on your phone or um, if you don't have, if you're on a keyboard streaming in, um, just write your question in capital letters. But let's use some pumpkins today in front of your question. The topic of today's show, which I teed up for you on Monday when I, put the question queue up on the Facebook brand page. The topic today is the scariest movie you could ever watch. And it's not the reel that Netflix is displaying for you today on Halloween. Somebody over on Facebook said they don't even watch Netflix anymore. They watch Whole Fix. <laughs> I love it. Um, so just some quick updates before we dive in. Um, just got back from Edmonton actually last night. So Chris and I flew out there uh, for four days over the weekend. I flew out to speak at doTERRA's post-convention tour out there. We had a full house. We actually, every single person showed up that had reserved a seat. And we had um, probably about 50 people standing as well. So we had um, over 500 people. I think this was actually the first time that Edmonton has had such a big event there. doTERRA has not grown um, as big there yet as it has uh, here in Ontario, for example. So that was super fun. Comment if you were there and if you're joining in right now. It was so fun to meet with you guys and talk for a bit and um, present those new products. Had a chance to meet with some locals just before that event. Super fun. Good crew there. Um, in other news as well, today being October 31st, last day of the month, I do want to mention for those of you that are on the fence, starting with doTERRA. Did you guys know there's a pretty epic promo that ends today? Did you see that car diffuser that I showed you? Um, it's probably at the beginning of the month. Uh, I showed what it looks like. It changes colors. It actually works. <laughs> you get that for free, um, along with three limited edition citrus essential oils. If you get started today with my favorite kit, the Home Essentials Kit. So I did want to give you that quick mention. We'll post in the um, comments right now on Facebook. I'll post you the link. If I'm the one who's been guiding you, feel free to set up your wholesale customer account through my link and you will get that free car diffuser and the oils with you. And I just wanted to mention it because it's a really good promotion that ends today. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention for updates, the um, November topics for this show are all going to focus on focus. <laughs> They're going to focus on focus. They're going to be on the topics of productivity, um, purging, clearing the deck to make room for your best life. And the reason I'm keeping the topics in November featured on those kinds of topics is because I'm making room and getting you warmed up for the launch of my new program, the Beautiful Life Lab. You've heard me mention this a few times. I've kind of sprinkled it in here and there. Um, and if you have joined me in previous Decembers, the last two years, I have run a free guided uh, blueprint program called the Beautiful Life Blueprint. 
and I'm going to leave that up always free. Um, but I receive so much feedback. I think this is probably the, the number one topic I hear from you guys on is you want more direction, more accountability, more, um, inspiration around how to actually take that blueprint and make it happen. And so I am creating for you. Okay. Those of you that have ever expressed that to me, I'm creating a new lab. It's going to launch December 1st. So for the month of November, I am personally clearing my own plate to completely be in the topic and marinate in the topic of productivity and life design so that I give you the best program when this goes live in December. Sound good? So I'm going to keep the podcasts pretty short in November. They'll be about 20 minutes long so that I can really dive into what I know I need to create for you. Um, but if you want to mark in your calendars, the, the uh, weeks that I will be live in November will be November 7th, 21st, and 28th. So I won't be live the week of November, uh, the Wednesday, November 14th. And then I will be taking off the whole month of December. So I hope you can join me for those topics in November. That would be awesome. Uh, Camilla, no, I am in London, Ontario, Canada, not England. Okay, so let's jam on today's topic. And if you have questions, like I said, drop a little pumpkin emoji in front of your question to make sure that I see it. Um, I'm not going to pay attention to the questions and comments as I go so I can stay on, on topic for you guys. And then, of course, the main priority will be the uh, questions that were the most liked over on the Facebook brand page when I started that queue on Monday. I'm going to take the most live, uh, liked questions at the end of the show today. Okay, so I want to open up. I want to ask you guys if you have ever watched the music video to Alan Jackson's song, Remember When. Have you guys seen that music video? It's older. I'm not sure how many years ago it was first created. Um, but if you want to look it up, go over to YouTube and search Alan Jackson. Remember when I remember when I remember when <laughs> I first watched that video and man, did I cry. It moved me to tears. Um, I really, I loved the concept of watching your life on a screen, like a movie playing to beautiful music when you're in your last few years of life. And while I'm fascinated um, by the ab ability that we have to anchor into the present moment, but I, I talk about this on the blog. I'm actually going to be uploading a Halloween blog post later today. If you want to watch for that, we'll put the link to that blog post. I have it. It's, it's one that I kind of update every year with fresh pictures and new ideas. But one of the things I love to blog about is how to anchor in to the present moment, how we use things like our senses, all of our senses to create memories. So this is why essential oils can be such powerful catalysts for anchoring those memories and really creating a memorable life. I find that the memories that I most remember are the ones where I felt, you know, love in that moment. And, and even now with my girls, when I use essential oils and I have music playing, and there's just a, a feeling of love and peace in our home, I can grab those memories so fast. And the reason it's got me thinking about that is, you know, when we reach the end of our life, we will easily remember those moments when we were present and when we were truly living in alignment, truly one with life. Like we've created the kind of life every day that we want to live. I, I believe that those that would be, you know, the movie reel that we would be playing. And, uh, you know, to tee this topic up today, I want you guys to picture yourself near the end of your life. OK. I want you to picture yourself. I hope we can all live to be at least 100 like my sweet grandma. She uh, she just actually passed away last last weekend. She lived 100 full full, beautiful, influential years. Um, and I want you all to picture yourself near the end of your life. You're watching your life, just like that Alan Jackson movie. You're watching your life on a big screen, okay? And it's showing how you got after it. It's showing you 
the highlight reel. It's showing you those moments. You know the moments. Okay. It's showing you how you gave your best and didn't worry what other people thought. Because every day you were committed to living your big life. You were committed to living your joy, giving your best, loving your life, learning, growing, teaching, earning, rinse, repeat, being at one with your life's purpose. No dilution. But what if that isn't the movie you end up watching when you reel back the tapes? What if you end up watching the movie of your life and you see a lot of moments where you exchanged your authenticity, where you traded in your joy, your purposeful life in the hope that other people would approve of you? What if that is the real that plays? What if you could see, when you watch the movie of your life, what if you could see all the dreams that you had locked away in a closet? And what would it look like if you could see what happened next? This is a big one. What if you could see what happened next after diluting yourself this person and this person and that person and that person. What if you could see the behind the scenes of that person's life that you diluted yourself for in order to have their approval? I'm going deep fast with you guys today. I hope that you are free of distractions as we talk about this. If you're not, please come back and give it a listen once I upload to the podcast. Because when I was thinking about today's show and the timing of Halloween, rather than show up with a wig on or a costume and be goofy today with you, I wanted to really tap into the topic of the things that we actually are scared of in our life. The things that we really need to fear. And in my opinion, my, so my greatest fear in life my greatest fear. It trumps public speaking. It even trumps spiders, which I am super freaked out about. My greatest fear is not living my fullest potential. Truly. I run everything across that barometer and it is, it is what gives me the boldness to not care one bit what someone thinks. Because my greatest fear would be reaching the end of my life whenever that is and feeling like I didn't squeeze out every drop of potential that I had. So I want you to think about how we do this, okay? Like our greatest fears are not really, you know, the things that we think they are. Our greatest fear is often, you know, what, what that person, that person that you're holding, you know, high real estate in your mind, you're, giving, you're renting out a room in your mind to them all the time. You're always thinking, what will they think? What if you could actually have a peek at that person's life? Truly, right? What if you learned that that same person you diluted yourself for was on their knees every night, broken, praying, hoping that someone or something would come into their life and be a light and give them hope? I want you to realize the very same person or people that you right now are di diluting yourself for, that you're playing small for, they're actually begging for somebody to come into their life and be a light because they are in rough shape. Because the only reason that you would dilute yourself for someone else is because they have made you feel, they, perhaps you feel that they judge you. Perhaps they have said something to you in the past when you've tried to live bigger and they've made you feel guilty for that. But what they were actually doing is somebody who is truly living their potential and being a light, they will never judge you. They will cheer you on because, you know, when you are in, in purpose, when you are in alignment with your big life, you're going to find more people like that and they're going to cheer you on. They like we need. That's how I feel anyway. I do this show every week because I want more strong leadership in our world, starting in, at home. You know, it's the very reason that I do the work that I do, even with doTERRA. You know, it is not about what you think. It is about empowerment and true connection to your health, your power, and owning it. 
That's why people start with doTERRA, for example. That's why you're drawn to this show. I want you to feel that you can rise up in your life and be, be a leader in your home, be a leader with your friends, be a leader to that person that you're diluting yourself for. What if you realized that the person that you are most concerned with, their judgment of you, what if you realized that every time they've hurt you, it's been a cry for help? What if you flip the script, the story that you're telling yourself about that person? Because the broken people are, they're, they, they, they're the ones casting a lot of that judgment, right? You know, there's a, there's a new book out. So Brene Brown wrote a new book. She has lots of great books, right? A lot of you follow her. She just wrote a book called Dare to Lead. And she refers to something in this book. I have not finished it. I've just started it. She refers to something in this book called The Cheap Seat Feedback. And I want to read you a quick excerpt, okay, um, that I scribbled out in the show notes today. So she talks about the danger of allowing um, people that are living in the cheap seats to to cast feedback on your life, okay? So she says, if you're not in the arena getting your butt kicked on occasion, I'm not interested in or open to your feedback. There are a million cheap seats in the world today filled with people who will never be brave with their own lives, but will spend every ounce of energy they have hurling advice and judgment at those of us who are trying to dare greatly. Their only contributions are criticism, cynicism, and fear-mongering. If you're criticizing from a place where you're not also putting yourself on the line, I'm not interested in what you have to say. We have to avoid the cheap seats feedback. Don't grab hurtful comments and pull them close to you by ruminating on them. Don't play with them by rehearsing your badass comeback. Don't pull hatefulness and judgment towards you. And the thing is, like, when you truly understand and you ask yourself, this person that I'm diluting myself for and therefore living a smaller life because of, you know, that person has never done what you are looking to accomplish. And, and part of what I want to help you tap into today is how important it is that you are only asking for feedback or only receiving feedback from somebody who has already done what you're looking to do. Those are the only people's opinions you should be concerned with. Unless you gave birth to them or you're married to them or they gave birth to you, I wouldn't be entertaining too many other opinions, okay? So just to be clear on that, the people that are living in the cheap seats of life, the people that, that often we, we are consumed in fear of what they will think of us and their judgment, those are the people who are struggling the most in life, okay? Be kind to them for sure, but absolutely have boundaries with them. Do not let them appear and rent a room in your mind and, and you know, influence whether you live big today or not. So I want to bring, um, there was an Instagram post that I wrote a couple of months ago that I want to kind of bring to life on today's show, because I think it fits perfectly into this topic. And it was on the topic of what are you willing to trade in in order to live your best life? So what are you willing to trade in? Are you willing to trade in the concern of what others think of you? Are you willing to trade in the concern of what others do or don't do? the concern of how others feel about the truth that you are committed to live, share, and teach? How about the overgiving of your time? Are you willing to trade that in? The overgiving of your resources, your mental energy, to those that were never going to do anything with your gifts in the first place? Are you gonna trade in the need to be liked by everyone? The fear of failing? which is usually not really the fear of failing. You need to fail many times as you learn and grow. If you unpack that, you might realize that you're actually afraid of what other people think of you through that, not the fail itself, okay? Are you willing to trade in caring about the feedback of people who have never done what you're willing to what you're wanting to do. 
Here's the truth, okay? And I wrote this in that, in that Instagram post if you wanna go look it up. It's going to cost you now or it's going to cost you really big later. A decade will go by and you'll realize that the people you downgraded your life for will be in the exact same spot they are today. Likely worse because nothing changes for the better by accident, right? It takes a decision to upgrade. Perhaps you'll find yourself sitting across from these same people at a coffee shop 10 years from now, listening to them go on and on and on, just drowning in jealousy and I wish I had done that and negativity and victim energy. We all can think of somebody like this in our life. And you'll be sitting there feeling sick to your stomach that you traded in years of your best life so that you could just sit here in this coffee shop feeling gross across from them at the table. These are the kinds of, you know, scenarios you really want to picture in your mind because this is what potentially happens if we continue to worry about what certain groups of people think about how we're living or, or what we're looking to pull out of dream world into reality. So come back, you know, come back to the present moment. If you just kind of went there in your head and you saw yourself having coffee with, you know, this friend and that friend that you're always worried about what they think. It's time to decide to upgrade, right? Like we have to, at some point, trade in the anchor for our wings. We have to, we have to make some trade-ins. And what you find when you do that, what you, like, what you actually end up finding is there's a lot more of us in the world who are out there flying with you. We're cheering you on, right? We, you know, when you let go of those anchors of the people who are never going to do it anyway, then it opens up a whole new awareness of people who are in your life. So on that note, I usually go to homework at the end of the show, but what I want to do today is I want to take you through three questions. So I want you to grab a notebook. I'm gonna have a sip of tea while you do that. I wanna give you three questions to do this week if this topic means anything to you. If you're ready to let go of that fear of what other people are thinking of you, the wrong people, okay? Like I said, there are people in your life you can go to and, and kind of run Run your actions by them or, or consider how, what you know, feedback they might have for you because only because they are the ones who have actually done what you're looking to do. Yes, trade in the anchor for your wings. Maybe that will be your next tattoo. Just don't get it on your lower back. <laughs> okay, um, here's the three questions. You guys ready? And then I'm gonna go to your questions. So number one, I want you to get clear on whose opinions of you truly matter. And it'll be a small group. I want you to write down their names so that every time you go to do something and you stop in fear of what people will think, I want you to look at the names that you're writing down here and ask yourself what they would think of you doing this thing because they have done the thing you're gonna do or some version of it. These people need to be people that are committed to their own best life. Because this is the trap, you guys. Like, if you, if you are constantly thinking about what one or two or three people are going to judge you for doing or what they might think of you doing something, they better, have, they better be people who are living their big life, right? Like, and I, I'm going to bet that they're not. I'm gonna bet that the people that you're seeking the most attention or love or approval from are not up to that. Because that's the only reason you feel judged by them. You will never ever be judged by somebody who is living their best life. You will be encouraged and uplifted and inspired by their own example to you, right? There's a quote I wrote down uh, with this question by Matt Kahn. I've shared it here before. He says, despite how open and peaceful and loving you are, people can only meet you as deeply as they've met themselves. Does that land? If, you are, if you're worrying what this person thinks of you, if you do X, Y, Z, or if you're worried how they're going to, what they're going to um, feel about you doing something, 
if you're committed to living your purpose and being love and being a light, the people that will not see that in you don't see it because they are not doing that for themselves. Does that make sense? So I hope that you have at least one person on your list, somebody you can think of that if you were to do the thing that you're worried about doing, they would be like, yeah, babe, right on. Go for it. Here's what I learned when I did that thing. Okay. Those are the only people to worry about. Question number two, not worry about, seek feedback from. Question number two, I want you to think about who the person is that you are seeking the most approval and love from. Who's the person that you constantly feel judged by, that you constantly, you know, you worry what they might think if you do the thing. And then I want you to, you know, write out why you think that is. Is it just because they're very opinionated? Tony Robbins, when I went to um, UPW a couple years ago, Unleash the Power Within, that's what that event is called. Um, he, he coaches in the moment at these events all the time. And one of the things he did at UPW is there was a, there was a woman who stood up. She was probably my age. And, um, you know, she shared all the blocks that she has and all the reasons why, all the excuses, why she has not like gone after it. And his question, I think it's one of his favorite questions to ask is which parent did you not receive enough love from or which parent do you seek the most approval from long story short she says it was her mother and that she totally limits herself out of fear of how that's going to make her mother feel because her whole life she's been seeking approval from her mother and tony robbins thinks that you know if you are somebody who's holding back in your life it's generally either your mom or your dad that you never felt you received enough love or encouragement or approval from. Um, so that might be something to dig into here. But anyway, he says to her, it's time for your mom to meet a pro. It's time for you to teach your mom what it looks like to live a big life. And I thought, wow, that's, you know, if you identify who that person is, maybe it's not a parent for you, but it's somebody that you're holding back because of. If you realize that like they, you know, maybe they've never experienced somebody that um, went after it against all odds or created a big life for themselves when there's a lot of reasons that they couldn't, okay? Um, the other thing to consider when you write down, you know, this person or that person's name on your page, that person that you're constantly seeking approval from, do they stand for something? Do they, do they have integrity in their life? Are they grateful for their life? Because maybe they haven't, you know, lived a big life yet maybe they haven't you know made a lot of their dreams come true in their own life but are they you know is there any reason that you should be seeking their approval often you'll find the people that you downgrade yourself for they are typically the least grateful people on earth they their life is not living proof of the advice that they're doling out to you it's quite the opposite and i just think it's so powerful to actually put names to paper sometimes and call it out, you know, so that you're clear on, on why. Because if you don't actually take time to do this, then they just live up here and they govern things. There is one more question I have for you, okay? And then we're gonna go to your questions. Actually, not a question, a prompt, okay? There is at least one thing, all of you, that this lands for. There's at least one thing you've been holding back on doing out of fear of what those people you wrote down are gonna think of you. So first I want you to write that thing down. What's the thing you know that you need to do, that you've been saying you're gonna do, and you're holding back, you're playing small out of fear of what those people are gonna think. If any of you want to share, Please go ahead, I would love that. Um, and I want you to ask yourself why this thing is important. What does it mean to you if you do it? Um, what will it mean to those that really matter to you if you do this thing? And I also want you to think about what you believe is the worst thing that could actually happen if you do that thing, okay? And then what? So the worst thing happens, let's say you do the thing and that worst thing happens that you're 
you're worried might happen. Then what? I do this with myself all the time. When I'm holding back from doing something, I ask myself, well, what's the worst that could happen if I do this? And what would I do then? And I, I literally mentor myself through the next step, right? The second part of this is what might happen next if you do that thing? What is that going to open up for you? What kind of ripple effect is that going to create in your life if you do that thing? Because you know your next move. I always say this when we're talking about like, well, I'm, you know, if somebody asks, I'm stuck, I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. You know what you need to do because you think about it often and you squash it and you're looking around too much. You're looking at what every other person who's in this, the same position you are is doing. You're not tuning in. You always know what you need to be doing. And some of you are sharing it in the comments. Tara said she's overcoming her fear of doing Facebook Live and people judging her, or criticizing her. So what if they do? Because if you actually understand why they would, you don't care anymore. Why would somebody ever criticize you for doing a Facebook Live that is going to help other people? The only people that would ever criticize you are the ones who are not helping people. Why do you care about them? Rachel said leaving her job. That's a big move, yeah. I wonder if there's a micro action within that that you could do. Or what needs to happen in order for that to happen? You know, you really need, what's, what is the thing that you know you need to do? And maybe it's in the next couple of months. It's like you're overarching, it is the thing. And you break it down. You look at all the little things that need to happen in order for that thing to happen. You give it a time frame because you know that that's going to open up lots of other things for you, right? And within this, you guys, when you've written down the thing, promise me you will not ask for anyone's advice as you do it because you always know what you need to do. Don't ask anyone else what they think about it before you do it. I want you to do it. Unless you know somebody personally close to you who has already done the thing you're about to do because maybe they have some some learnings for you. Not that you're going to avoid failure. I do believe that you, you, you do need to stumble. You need to fail in order to truly learn, right? You're going to have to do it. So um, you can never be like 100% ready before you do something. I want you guys to live big. I want you to live your neon life. I want you to really unpack this and, and picture yourself at the end of your life, looking back at the decisions and at the actions that you took. And was it a story of you worrying constantly about what this person and this person were thinking of you? Or did you go do the thing and stop caring about that? Because I'll tell you right now, the more you take action and the more committed you are every single day to living big, you will not care one bit what those people think. I certainly don't. I said this to you a couple weeks ago. I cannot remember, honestly, I cannot remember the last time I asked for someone else's advice or feedback as I was doing the thing. Because I actually, I don't know a lot of people who are doing the things I'm looking to do. And so I know that I've got to have my own back. I know that the best way for me to learn and to keep tapping into my purpose and my fullest potential is to keep showing up, to keep doing the things that I know I'm here to do and fail through it. Who cares? I don't, I don't care what anyone else thinks of my success or of my failures. I don't care one bit. I care what I think of that. That's it. And I do care what my husband thinks, and I do care what my girls think, and I do care what my mother thinks, but not as much as I care about what I think of what I'm doing, okay? And I want that for you. I want, I want you to like run everything by this lens going forward of, well, who is it that I'm, who's up here right now that's causing me to second guess myself and really ask yourself why, why have you allowed them to rent a room in your mind and they better only be up there if they've already shown you that their life matches their words that they're, they're walking their talk. Okay, I'm gonna hop over to Facebook. I know you guys are, you're commenting quite a bit over here. There's some questions there. I do wanna honor the queue. 
first, okay? And I have not, um, I haven't looked at these questions yet because I actually prefer when I do this live with you, I prefer to allow um, just that in the flow kind of talk happen as if we were just sitting together having tea. By the way, I do want to tell you, I am so obsessed. I have a chamomile, it's like a stash organics chamomile tea in here right now with a drop of turmeric, doTERRA's new turmeric. I want you guys to try it. It kind of tastes like a campfire, yummy, kind of like shaga tea. If you've done that, tumorone tea, <laughs> if anybody knows what I mean by that. Okay, the first most liked question, Jenny Bittner, I think you're on live, I think you're on Instagram. She said, um, I'd love your take on doTERRA being enough. I myself went through this and came out the other side and I see a lot of people still stuck in the notion that they feel they're meant for bigger things, which in turn takes up so much time and energy that they have no time left for their doTERRA business. So I know we have quite a few doTERRA people here, but just sub in whatever it is that you're doing um, out of, you know, and maybe, same thing applies to you. You're concerned about what people think if you only do that one thing, okay? Um, at what point did you stop doing all the things you were doing, such as nutrition, personal training clients, etc., and just focus on growing your doTERRA business, where rather than being a jack of all trades, master at none? How did you feel it was enough? Um, okay, so here's right away what I think of here. I am still doing the work that I know I'm here to do. I just am doing it with different communities now. So what I, what I always suggest to people is that they strip away all of the distractions that are in their life that are causing them not to create movement within the thing they're committed to right now. So let's say that is a doTERRA business. If you are somebody who's hopping around and you're you're doing doTERRA and you're doing another company, you know, if you're in affiliate marketing and, and you're every, it's like every month you're kind of doing something else, you're not going to have success. Okay. Period. doTERRA doesn't, I mean, they actually have it in their policy manual that, you know, they suggest that you only focus on your doTERRA business, that you don't go um, trying to build a leggings business and a skincare business with another company at the same time. But you know what? I mean, yes, they implement that in the policy manual, but you want to know something? doTERRA knows you're not going to be successful doing that anyway. I have never, ever seen somebody be successful when they're divided between various things, but that's not entirely what Jenny's asking here. So number one, my advice within this is give it all you've got until you are an established silver ranked leader. Silver, you have three somewhat, you know, business partners that are working the business with you, okay? At silver is when I really see the need for you to um, develop in your leadership to really tap into um, what you want this to be. And this can and should be a business that brings out your top strengths and your gifts and helps you, like I talked about last week, get closer and closer to working with your muse, which is you of a couple years ago. So one of my, you know, personally, one of my core passions and one of my gifts is taking complicated health info and helping people break it down into a very doable plan and creating community around it. So I don't just, you know, enroll people in doTERRA and help them get oil collections. I care very much about the dot, dot, dot after that. So to your question, Jenny, I, I have basically integrated all of the work I did prior to doTERRA into my doTERRA community. So I run cleanse programs for them. I do a lot of leadership with them. And all of that is stuff I was doing prior to doTERRA. It's just that now I have the most captive audience because I, you know, again, like doTERRA is only going to attract people who are committed to living their best life and, and having ownership over their health and success. So like that is the prime audience. If you're somebody who cares about anything within ownership and health and success, I mean, I'll give you another example. One of the uh, diamonds, one of my diamond business partners, Ashley Shrokas. She um, she was a, a very focused RHN, registered holistic nutritionist, prior to DoTerra. But one of her um, highest you know interests is helping people with web design and branding and blogging. So she, it's brilliant. She you know she has a diamond business in DoTerra. So she's got a big team, but she actually 
um, attracts a lot of people because she helps them get clear on their branding and website design because she's skilled in that. I'm not saying that, you know, would be all of you, obviously. She loves that topic. So that is actually an attraction point for people that work for her. She attracts a lot of nutritionists who want to get clear on their branding. And guess what? Of course, they want to integrate doTERRA because it is like it's the healthcare language that we speak, right? Um, I'll give you another example. Gerilyn Powers, she's a blue diamond on our team and one, another one of my business partners. And she's really gifted at teaching women how to listen in their intuition, how to tap into that, specifically mothers, because she is a mother of one with another one on the way. She's very in tune right now with what it means to to reduce the noise and all the feedback we get, especially as mothers. And she guides women through that and she attracts women very interested in that topic. And again, guess what? Those women are very interested in having the tools in their home for their little ones to tap back into that intuition. Okay. Um, I mean, I could give lots of examples of this. Another blue diamond on my team, Susan Bursick. She was one of the very first leaders that joined me in this business. She, um, she was running a full-time daycare in her home before doTERRA really started to heat up. And guess who her almost entire community is? It's like all the moms in London. <laughs> because that is her passion is to create community and to really help mothers who are staying at home right now tap into their gifts and realize that there's more for them. And maybe they didn't think there was. So, and I mean, these are just a few examples, but, um, and I mean, Jenny, hello. Like Jenny has another business. I know this, um, called the dough planner. And she, you know, she loves, obviously she loves talking about organization and planning. So I just want to give her a little shout out. You can go check out that website, but that's an example of, you know, obviously we all come into whatever business we find ourselves in at different points in our life. We're doing different things for most people. It becomes what saves the day. It like, it is the solution to leaving the cubicle to not living a life that you dread, but actually tapping in to your, your gifts where it comes to life. And I, I, I can just really attest to this personally. I'm able to bring my gifts to life with my community. And we're a big community now. I can serve 100,000 people around the world through our oil community in the next level things. So this, you know, this is where you are going to be given the platform for you to do your big work. Do you know what I mean? So it's not about stopping all the things you love and only being in your mind a, for example, a doTERRA leader. No, 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 no. This is about you having the platform and impact to do the real work you're here to do with, with the people that are here for you, that are looking for you. Okay. I hope that helps. Um, Sheena. Got your question here. She says, in an age where everyone's life is at our fingertips for comparison and where we can constantly bump into each other's insecurities, how can we graciously deal with those, perhaps even in our own community and team, who may secretly have envy and jealousy towards us for whatever their reasons, being in a higher rank than them or being healthier than them or having more freedom than them? For every dozen who are inspired by that, there seems to always be a small handful who want to bring you down. What is the best way to graciously and kindly navigate through those negative energies coming at you? This actually is very in line with what I talked about today, how you potentially could dilute yourself and play small for people out of fear of what they'll think because they don't have what you have. But I want you to really understand what the role of a leader is. It is to go to a place where people are not yet and to be an example to them of it being possible, but not to drag them there with you. And if you're constantly worried about what people who have less health or less success than you are thinking, you're actually never gonna help them anyway. Like, you know, are you gonna be anchored to this level in your life so that you don't make them feel bad? I shared this once before, but I received, um, I was on the end of this kind of feedback early on when I was building doTERRA. It was not making everybody feel so hot um, that maybe had been building doTERRA before I started, okay? And 
this was, it was kind of shocking to me because I remember thinking like, well, let what I'm doing be an example to you of what's possible maybe, and, and find the inspiration within it of what's possible. But I had to like kind of sit and digest that and think, well, what would be the best thing for me to do in this situation? Slow down to make them feel better? Like what was, what was the option? Or do I carry on full speed ahead, committed to living my best life and helping as many people as I can? And that's what I decided to do. And I, I actually said, I said that, you know, I voiced that, that, well, I, you know, I hear you, but I'm not going to change what I'm doing. So sometimes you actually have to have a, a physical conversation with the person. I mean, they may come to you and voice it, but you have to be prepared to stand up for yourself and the work that you know you're here to do. Because um, again, if your goal is to help the most people, then the worst thing you could do is limit yourself and stay here in your health and stay here in your success because that's not going to help a single person. So that's very in line with what we talked about today. I won't expand any more on that, but yeah, it's going to happen. Of course it's going to happen. Of course it's going to happen. When you, when you are doing this, and here's the thing, you're going to have shuffling happen in your life. There are certain people, um, whether they're in your business or in your neighborhood or in your family, there are, there are people that are going to need to be cleansed out. Just bottom line. They, and maybe you've been giving them a little bit too much of your time. But there's a whole next level waiting for you, a next level of friendships and opportunities and connections that's going to open up for you as you expand and as you rise into your next level of health, of success, etc. Okay, Alana asked, how do you conquer fears while staying true to yourself? When faced with a challenge, I find the hardest part is to move forward in confidence that I'm being genuine rather than rising to someone's expectations. So again, I think this requires you to tap into who you know you're here to be. And maybe you need to you know, take time with this and think like, what would, ask yourself, what would your best day look like? How would you feel? What would you do? How would you talk? Who would you talk to? You know, what, what would you be doing? What kind of mother would you be? What kind of wife would you be or friend would you be if you were living at your best? Because that's where your confidence comes from. And I think um, Rebecca, she's on live over on Instagram. She voxed me earlier this week. We were talking about that topic of who your dream customer is. And she was saying, you know, I, that's, wow, it's so simple to realize that your dream customer is actually who you were a couple years ago. Because sometimes we complicate it thinking it's, it's supposed to be some person that we don't understand and we're trying to market to them. Um, if we realize that our confidence rises and the same thing to this question Alana asked, you know, you conquer your fears by being true to you when you're truly doing, you know, the work in the way that you want to and in the way, you know, you're here to do it in um, the confidence just comes because you're being you right. It's you, it's your material, it's your insight, it's your perspective on things. And this is why it's so important to reduce the amount of watching and consuming that you're doing, because then you end up having a whole bunch of other people's voices in your head and it gets really hard to hear your own. So that dissipates, that fear dissipates when you are just you know, moving forward in confidence, like you said, Alana. Okay, I think there was a, one more question I wanted to take here. Um, before we close out, what was it? Ah, here it is. Okay. So Vanessa asked, she said she loved last week's topic on social media. She said, I have a question related to the dream customer. I totally resonate with it being the me from a few years back. And of course, I'd want to speak to her as my dream customer. But what about finding my dream leader? She said, what about finding that woman that I want to collaborate with and lead with? She's certainly not me from a few years back. No way. She's the me of now. So my dream customer is different to my dream leader that I want to attract. How do I speak to both of these women at the same time because they're so different? And she goes on to explain that. How about this topic? Does this, is this a question that a lot of you have? Because if you're building a business, you, um, you want to attract people who feel your heart as a leader, who have a sense that they, they know what you're about, right? And they wanna know that you're confident. 
Well, this is actually a very simple thing to understand. You're right that your dream customer and your dream business partner are not the same person. But what I think your dream business partner or leader is looking for in you is a sense of direction and a sense of confidence. And where does that come? That only comes if you feel authentic about what you're doing and you're confident in your approach, right? Your confidence, like we talked about last week, in attracting your dream customer comes because you know her. You're not looking at, you're not trying to figure out who she is. You are her from a couple of years ago, right? That's what we talked about. So that sense of confidence in how you speak and how you market to her, that is what your next leader is paying attention to. They wanna, they wanna feel from you that you have a sense of direction and clarity about who you're here to help because true leaders, they are able to paint a picture of the future through how they show up. There's a sense of, there's a knowingness about them and, and a safety. You feel safe making a decision to partner with them in business because they're very clear on who they are. So they are related as, you know, as you're marketing to that customer, you're not going to attract a true leader because of the way you're, you know, the message that you're sending your customer. You're going to attract a leader because of the way that you're doing it, the confidence with which you do it. Does that make sense? It's the confidence and the direction that you have, that you're somebody who takes your work seriously. No one else is going to take you seriously if you flake out on what you say you're going to do. No one else is going to take you seriously if you're not somebody committed to your best every day. And, and maybe, maybe that's actually the energy that you're giving out out of fear of what people are going to think of you. You're playing small, and that's why you're not attracting business partners because they don't want to work with you. They don't want to work with a flake. They don't want to work with somebody who's saying one thing and doing another or, you know, try something once and maybe it doesn't go so well and they quit on it. That's not, that's not attractive to somebody who's wanting to invest their time into something with you. So they're connected because if we actually tune in and, and actually both topics are connected, aren't they? If we think about what we talked about last week with understanding your dream customer and the confidence that comes in that, and then the topic of today of to stop diluting ourselves out of fear of what a few people might think of us, that's also a very murky kind of life that, you know, there is no confidence there. No confidence is going to, to bubble up in your business and in the way that you're marketing the work that you do and, and reaching people. If you're always diluting yourself, it's a diluted confidence. It's a fake confidence then. So I'll wrap this up. I want to look at some of the comments that you guys wrote live, but this is what was on my heart today. It's Halloween. We do a lot of fake things today to, to kind of go boo and scare, you know, scare people. Or maybe we're dressing up today as adults, tapping in. Maybe we're tapping into a part of ourselves that we aren't expressing in, in everyday life. But when I thought about today and the timing of this and being on Halloween, I was thinking, you know, what actually is the scariest thing in life? And it's not spiders and it's not heights and it's not public speaking. I think for a lot of us, if we really think about this, it would be reaching the end of our life and realizing we threw it all away. Man, what a cost it is to day in and day out worry about what people are going to think of us. Rip that Band-Aid off, guys. Rip it off and just have a clear picture of what, at least whatever is in your vision right now for your life of what your best day, your best giving, your best service would look like. Who do you need to be? How do you need to feel? What does that look like? And just let go of that fear of what other people are going to think of it because it's holding you back. It is, it is a wall. It is separating you from your best life. Big wall. And if you let go of it, you know what? They might say something. But what's the worst thing that could happen? And then what? And maybe, maybe your dream would come true and those people would actually hop out of your life. Wouldn't that be awesome? Those same people that are not up to big things and living their big life and judging you, wouldn't it be great if they went and found someone else? 
<laughs> Just some thoughts. Let me scroll through and see your comments. Okay, uh, someone said, my husband and son are the ones I want approval from. My husband is supportive most of the time, but then sometimes he criticizes me. That's tough, right? It's tough if it's happening within your own home. Um, but you know what? You'll be the reason that he um, makes better commitments in his own life. It, it's a, that's a tricky thing. And you need to have at least one encouraging relationship in your life because that's big work. The biggest work you will do will be within your own home and within your own family. That will be the most challenging. So you, you need to have a strong sense of yourself. You need to be developing your mindset every day. Have patience with, with him. Love him as much as possible. Be kind. Protect your time. Do what you need to do. When I hear this, I often think, well, where are you going to carve out that time for yourself to develop your mindset? Because maybe the difficulty right now is taking time to do that when when your husband might feel that it's family time or his time or whatever. So you've got to make the time to become better in yourself. It's the same thing for moms. You need to invest in yourself. This was the biggest feedback. I had a huge round, the most engaged round of uh, students in my Ready, Set, Glow detox last week. The biggest shift many of them were experiencing was what, it, what actually happened when they put themselves higher on the list. Their fear has always been, well, you know, that my family is going to suffer. My kids are going to suffer if I actually give time to myself. But they found it's the opposite. They found that their, their family was actually commenting on how much happier they were and how nice it was to have more present time with them. Because that is what happens when you're feeling at your best, right? All right. Let me just scroll through really quick. I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything. Instagram. I hope today landed for you. You're going to cut out in a few minutes over there. So you can join us back here for a few minutes if you want on Facebook. Um, oh, thank you, Christine. She wrote out each of the comments that I went through. So there was the third question there. There's question two and question one. Appreciate you typing that out. Oh, Veronica said, my daughter's been having a horrible four weeks at school and being bullied. I will have her listen to you when she gets home today. Yeah, oh, that's heavy, Mama. We haven't experienced uh, it to the full extent yet, but in, in smaller doses with my girls. I think, and again, our children, their sense of themselves, that work heavily is influenced by conversations within the home. And helping, you know, helping them really cultivate that relationship and, and just having, taking the time to have those conversations at home is so important. So, yes, thank you for sharing this. I hope it stimulates some meaningful, helpful conversation for you and her after. Okay, anything else? Instagram, going to lose you in a few minutes, but thank you for your comments over here. Natalie says, girl, thank you for all this amazing content. It's enhancing so many other leaders in doTERRA. It means so much to us all. Oh, thank you. And thanks for tuning in and sharing. Essential Babe said, I absolutely love your truth talks. This has resonated strongly with me this morning. Thank you. So good to hear that, you guys. I just kind of, you know, sometimes when I, when I really tune in, I'm like, no, this is the topic for today. <laughs> so I'm glad I landed right on. Okay, someone said over on Instagram, I need to leave nursing. It's draining me in a way I cannot replenish myself despite my best efforts. I want to start a slower life and start a farm, but my husband is content with life as it is. One of the best questions I think you can ask your husband or wife or whoever that you make decisions with is what would be possible if dot, dot, dot. Get them, get them thinking bigger, get them dreaming. You know, if this thing happened, what would that mean for us? And see what they have to say. Um, nursing's a challenging career, but I know, I know a lot of nurses, and I think you're really, really elevating our healthcare and, and disrupting it in a big way. Okay, I'm gonna lose you guys over there. Anyone else have anything they want to share on this topic over on Facebook?
Mm. Sue said, I'm not afraid of death, but I'm totally petrified of regrets. Isn't that the truth? Wow. Yeah. Jamie said, question. How do you keep all your notes from everything you read and listen to? How do you organize them all? I use Evernote. So I have like 500 different notes over there. So when I read a book, I do a note on that book. Um, I have notes by topic. And I love it in digital form like that. You can obviously use a notebook. Um, but I love it in digital form because whenever I'm doing a topic, for example, on this show, I just search the keyword. So if I was doing the topic of fear, I would search fear in my Evernote and everything I've ever written or learned on that topic comes up. So it helps me organize my brain uh, with what I want to share with you on that topic. So yeah, that's how I do it. Uh, Marissa said, I have the self-confidence formula on my mirror and repeat it out loud once a day. And it's helped me increase my confidence so much for the past three years. It comes from Napoleon Hill's book, The Law of Success. And it's also on the back of doTERRA's launch guide. Cool. Thanks for sharing. I'm going to look that up. I'm not familiar with it. Andrea said, I would love to know when those diamonds convert those women who came to her interested in their specialties in, into doTERRA. Um, the conversion is very natural. I think so. Andrea is asking, you know, let's say somebody is attracted to what I do because they want to have. Like, let's say I was still coaching in holistic nutrition and somebody um, I attracted, you know, to the work that I do today because of that. Like I, like I mentioned, and I can't speak for other companies and, and the product that they have, but the real reason doTERRA is so massive and is creating such a massive movement is not necessarily what you think it is. Yes, the essential oils are the purest, most potent, highest quality in the world. That's like, that's the, that's the draw. But the real work, the real reason people are attracted so heavily to this movement is because of what it does for them. It's the ownership. It's the empowerment. I often say, as a mom, you cannot put a value or a dollar amount on the feeling this lifestyle gives you as a mother. So it, it's not hard at all. There's no conversion um, because it's such a natural attraction. Anybody interested in a higher level of health and leadership in their own life is going to want to work with these tools. Absolutely. Okay, right on. Hi, Helen. I'm seeing you on Friday. <laughs> great, great conversation this week, you guys. I think... Um, this is something to sit with for sure. Probably not today because life's so busy. I know, especially if you have kids, you probably have a lot of things you got to do tonight. But take some time this weekend with your notebook and, and really, you know, sit with these questions. Give that person a name in your notebook that you're playing smaller for. Really unpack that, okay? Um, because otherwise, a lot of time is going to go by and you'll look back and, and wonder why in the world did I worry what they thought? Cause you'll see their life. It won't change. Maybe you'll be the reason that it does. I hope for that for you. Okay. We'll see you guys back next week.